Good evening, gospel revolutionaries around the world. This is Michael Lilborn Williams coming to you as live as it gets, right here from the Queen City in Clarksville, Tennessee. We've just had a big storm move through, so I'm not having to compete with the bright light behind me. So here I am. <laughs> Uh, no shirt and tie, but just as important of things to say for sure. In fact, I want to follow up on last week's teaching that we did out of Matthew uh, chapter 16, verse 18. A uh, very powerful statement that when it is read for what it actually says, means something way different than 1.3 billion people take it to mean and have built a church on Peter, uh, they, uh, which is uh, Petros <laughs> or Petros, however you say it. If you live in, it, in East Tennessee, it's Petros, Tennessee. But uh, Petros, we'll give them that. Uh, uh, like I said, we call it Petros around here. But uh, that is Peter's name, a given name. And anybody that was stopped and just for a moment, uh, even back when all of this was very misguidedly used to say what they're trying to say. And I've been there to the Vatican and I've seen the little box. They say that they have Peter's remains, which is the very center of the uh, uh, St. Peter's Basilica. The word basilica literally means tombs. Uh, or tomb, uh, it's a tomb. That's uh, what a basilica is. And um, they can have church in there, whatever they want, but a basilica is where they put dead bodies. <laughs> uh, it's quite an amazing experience. Uh, it's a cultural experience for sure. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was a little nauseated after seeing how much uh, bedazzlement that dead priest had on them in the catacombs underneath the Vatican. Uh, there's just row after row of former priests where their dead bodies are laid out and mummified or encased or whatever with uh, crowns and jewels and stuff that would feed an entire third world country for a year. Ugh. I, Sorry, I can't get on board with that. <laughs> All right, so instead of telling you what I'm sick of, let me tell you what I'm really happy about. And that is that we know uh, where Christ has built his church. I want to restate this because I don't think I said it as clear as what the Greek actually says it here. And that's in Matthew chapter 16. And I say unto thee, thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Now, the, uh, the term Peter is the word Petros, uh, and if uh, Jesus was saying he was going to build his church on Petros, he would have said, therefore, I'm going to build my church upon Petros. That's not what he said. He said, I'm going to build my church on Petra. Now, Petra is self-defining as a massive stone. The word Petros is a pebble. It's, it's a small thing. Uh, an insignificant thing, if you will. And um, that uh, we even, they even came up with the term Petra to name the city that is there in, uh, in the land of the Bible and uh, where an entire city was carved out of stone. So he was talking about something that everybody knew. This is not like this was hidden, even the term Petra was used. They did not use the term Petros to name, they did not name Petra Petros. <laughs> I lived in Petros, I've never lived in Petra. <laughs> so uh, here, this incredible statement though, let me read it as it is stated in the Greek. And I say unto thee, thou art Petros. Therefore, the word and actually should be translated therefore. And I say unto thee, thou art Petros, therefore upon this Petra will I build my church. Now the term build, I also wanted to go into that in just a second. Uh, that sounds like something under construction, which that does have that connotation to it. But as you know, Greek words can have a much greater definition than sometimes 
a single word out of the English uh, cannot really define a word in the Greek uh, because there's just a, a multitude more words. Uh, and it actually means not just to build, but it means it's actually translated uh, to be edif uh, edifying and also emboldened. So he didn't just say, I'm gonna build my church upon myself, which Jesus, we took you through all the verses, uh, uh, everything from the Hebrew scriptures uh, that told us that Jesus indeed was the Petra. Jesus was never called the uh, Petros. He was called the Petra. And uh, on this Petra has uh, the church been built and it is edified on Christ. It's not only built on Christ, it's edified on Christ and in Christ. Uh, it is emboldened. Yep, we've been emboldened around here. In fact, that's what Paul said. He said, you know, because of this incredible gospel, he said, uh, he said uh, many, because of what you've taught, uh, and what has been taught before, it has emboldened others to be able to teach even with more boldness. So we hope that's what's happening uh, here. I get calls all the time of people uh, that are in situations they would really like to help, but sometimes there's just no way to get around trying to get to somebody in their last hours and last days and when the only people around them are Christian folks who are uh, trying to get them saved so that they can get them out of hell and all of these things. Um, but the one thing that we know is if you have this hope in you, this hope which has been revealed, this hope that has been fulfilled, uh, it certainly emboldens you to be able to say what the gospel actually has to say to us. We also had a comment, uh, Daniel and I mentioned it, and uh, we like to try to respond to every comment that we have that comes in. And uh, we had one comment that came in that said that there's, after we made the statement, I, after I had made the statement that we were a research ministry, and we had a comment coming in that there's no such thing as a research thing uh, ministry. I don't remember exactly how it was said, but the statement that was being made was that there was, where in the Bible was there such a thing as a research ministry? So uh, maybe in jest, I, I don't really know, but it was, hey, we take advantage of everything that comes in that we get to respond to that helps us be able to share the gospel. Let me, let me share with you what the word ministry means. It's an overly spiritualized word now, but actually the word ministry just means to give attendance to anything that is a uh, service to bring relief. Remember, bring relief. It's a ministry if it brings relief. I don't care what you do. Uh, if you are, uh, uh, let me, uh, you can identify actually uh, a doctor who is helping somebody uh, that it's actually a ministry because it's bringing relief. That's what the word ministry means. And we've, we have, uh, bibliophiled it, and it means nothing except it is in the Bible. And But the fact of it is that the term used in the Bible act, actually is applicable in anything that is done that brings relief. So why do we do research? Why is that a ministry? Because whew, it brings relief. <laughs> In fact, the number one comment over these last few decades in sharing the gospel of grace and peace uh, is that number one thing is that it brings relief. Oh, what a relief it has been. And uh, we get that all the time. Uh, and that is the number one thing that it does bring. Uh, we don't get people saying, wow, you know, I got your prayer cloth and I put it on my body and got healed or I sent a thousand dollars to your ministry and went to the mailbox and got 10,000 in the mailbox back. We have none of those testimonies happening whatsoever uh, because they're not true. They're not, even the ones that get them, they're not true. It just is not happening. And you say, well, that sounds very emboldened to me, Mike. 
And that's what the gospel does for you. It emboldens you. But what it really is, is that it edifies you at the same time. And uh, it, it helps you even as you're going to hear, oh my gosh, wait till you hear the show that is coming out on Friday. Oh my goodness, you are going to just have your mind blown once again about this issue about uh, the about ministry and what it is and uh, uh, going into 1 Corinthians once again. I think we cover all of chapter two, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, we want you to understand that the understanding uh, of the uh, statement that Jesus made was that he said, now you are just a little stone. This is, this is flat out what Jesus said to Peter. Now you're just a little stone. That's what your name means is you're just a little stone. Therefore, I'm going to build my church upon the Petra. And that is the word that is used to describe Christ is the Petra. And that is something much larger and much more meaningful than a Petros. Uh, so, and also the word uh, build, uh, like I said, it means something much more uh, than uh, just to build something. It means that it's, it's how it's edified. It's not only how it's built, it's how it's maintained. I think that's the words that I was looking for. Uh, on Christ, the church has been built and not just, it's not just been built, but it is maintained the very same way it was built. Um, so uh, the, uh, the power of the work of the cross is something that maintains the very work that was done is the very same power that holds it all together. I remember back when uh, people started making statements about Jim and Tammy Faye Baker and uh, saying statements like, oh, there's a cancer in the body of Christ. That is a lie. There is no cancer in the body of Christ. The body of Christ is absolutely pure and holy and without blame. There are stupid people in the body of Christ that are saying stupid things that are sick uh, and what they're saying. But the body of Christ, you have to see that from God's perspective. This isn't from our perspective. This is from God's perspective that the body of Christ is completely whole. There is no sickness in the body of Christ. Oh, please let me convince you of that today. There is no sickness in the body of Christ. There's, there's a lot of crazy people that are, are in it, but there's no sickness in the body. Uh, let me take to uh, you also to uh, these verses in Acts. Uh, uh, speaking of the, the comments that we had gotten about there being such a thing as research. Uh, as I've gone through this to look at this to see where I might have been wrong to say such a thing, actually I've gone the other direction and realized the only ministry that everybody should be in is research ministry. <laughs> that should be what's bringing relief to you and to your family is that you're actually researching uh, what you hear. Uh, Acts uh, chapter 17 and uh, verse 11 uh, these were more noble than uh, these in Thessalonica in that they received the word of God with readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether they uh, whether or not these things were so. Uh, so the, uh, the first thing that I want to point out is that they received what they heard with a lot of excitement. And uh, I hope that if you hear something that sounds good, it's okay to get excited about it. Uh, I've heard a lot of things that sounded good and got excited about it. When I first heard of Mirror Bible and people were telling me about it and I read a couple of verses out of it, I got very excited about it. And uh, to the point to where that, uh, as I've told you, that... Um, uh, uh, Lydia and Francois were guests in my home for an evening, and we had a wonderful time. I had not really looked into Mirror Bible to see how it read, and then Don started pointing out some things to me, and then I started doing the actual research in it, 
And I found out that this is, it's is almost a spoof on a translation. It's not a translation at all. It's not a word for word and it's not a thought for thought translation. It is, Franz, uh, it is Francois' thought about one subject and then that is layered into most every verse that he translates or every thought that is there. He transfers that thought into as it was and always has been because that is Francois' persuasion. But that persuasion is taught by nobody in the New Testament. It was, it was never uh, prophesied in the Hebrew scriptures. It just simply is not there anywhere. Uh, the, uh, uh, ta -da -ta, where are we going? We are going to uh, Psalms 119. And we're going to read down through one, uh, 119, uh, 97 through 104. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Now, this is a Psalm of David. And uh, when he said, I love thy law, it's, it's the word Torah. And the word Torah is all, the, all of the things that uh, God said through Moses. Now, David said, I love everything you said through Moses. That's what the Torah is. It's the first five books of the New Testament or the Pentateuch. Uh, so what he was saying, he wasn't just saying, I love 10 commandments uh, because there's way more than that. Uh, what he said that he loved was, uh, what he was saying was, I love all of the things that you have spoken through Moses. Now, a lot of our friends don't love everything God said through Moses, uh, but David did. Uh, it says, thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. We're not calling any of these people our enemies, please. Uh, we don't see that as an adversarial thing at all. We're doing exactly what uh, you're going to find out on Friday's show, that it's required of everyone. If you're going to listen to something, at least Paul said, it's not required. Paul said, I'm ashamed of you that you can't hear a teaching and know whether or not it came from uh, a valid uh, understanding of the scriptures or not. You should know the scriptures well enough to know whether what you're, whether or not what you're hearing is truth. He said, I have more understanding than all my teachers for thy testimonies are my meditations. Where do you think his, these testimonies came from? All of these testimonies came to through the Hebrew scriptures of which we are now reading. Psalms uh, 119, 100. I understand more than uh, the ancients because I keep thy precepts. He says, uh, even the ancients, even uh, uh, the people of old, he says, I, uh, understanding can be had more. We have more people looking to uh, all kinds of philosophies and places uh, to try to find understanding about life than they do through the understanding of the first five books of the Hebrew scriptures. He said, I have not departed from thy judgments for thou hast taught me. How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Uh, through thy precepts and through thy teachings, and he's talking about the teachings that came through Moses, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Uh, the term false it's a pretty simple term, uh, uh, actually. You try to figure out, well, what's false and what's not. Uh, it just means, I just hate everything that's a sham. <laughs> and folks, let me tell you something. There are 45,000 denominations out there that compared to the gospel that Paul taught based on the Hebrew scriptures, it's all a sham. 
And uh, these things are uh, things for you to decide. You are the one who, uh, we're not the ones who are to decide for you, but we are obligated, we feel in ourselves, and just because we, we try to do something about this at all, that uh, we look into the Hebrew scriptures to see whether or not these things be true. So remember, there's nothing wrong with the body of Christ. There's nothing wrong with the church. There's not a sickness in the body of Christ. There's not a sickness in the church. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the Hebrew scriptures. Uh, there's not something that's gone so afoul that you have to come up with a sham doctrine. And uh, what this does, you, uh, people go around saying all the time, oh, I just give God all the glory. You don't even have to give God the glory because if you teach the right thing, he has all the glory. 